Hey everybody, it's me, the old guy, but today I'm not jamming. Today I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks for strings and picks. Say that five times fast and you will offend somebody, I guarantee it. Now this is all a matter of personal taste, but the strings and, that you use and the picks you use are as big a part of your overall playing pleasure as the guitar, the amp, the tubes, the speaker, song selection, all of that works together for that uh, those moments that we strive for that euphoria in playing and when you pick up a guitar one of your guitars you don't want any aspect of it to fight you you want the whole experience to be wow this is the nicest guitar i've ever played every time you pick it up and oftentimes if there's something about one of your guitars you don't like it oftentimes can be something as easy as the string gauge that you've selected to put on it. Some people go by tens all the time. I'm a 10 through 46. I slap tens on everything and drop tune, you know, drop a half step tune on every guitar I play. Uh, and you can't do that. I don't think it's advisable anyway. I suppose you can do it. But different guitars like different types of strings. Uh, strats and tellies very often like nines, but uh, I also like to put tens on them and then drop them half a step. I think Telecasters and Fenders, uh, Fenders, Telecasters and Strats like to be dropped half a step. And then I like a 10, just because nine on anything is just a little bit too soft for me. It, uh, I don't care for the, for that light of gauge. Anyway, so we take you through some stuff like that. And since we're talking about strings already, I guess we'll just stick with it. Now the guitar can often tell you what it wants. Um, so you have to be aware of that as well. On this ESP behind me, I'm uh, still fooling around with string gauges there. I'm trying to turn it into a, a more of a metal guitar. And I want to, dec I decided on tuning it to C sharp standard, which would be drop B. So C, C sharp standard. And I've tried a lot. I tried uh, strings from this guy, the DR, the hand wound string made in the US. It had a 60 low E, which was ridiculously thick. Didn't like that. Um, also tried some others that were also ridiculously thick on the bottom and didn't like it. Um, but right now, what I've got on it is this right here. Some beefy slinkies. Goes from an 11 to a 16, 15, 22. I like everything about this set except that 22. I don't like that one. Easter egg. But I went to a music store and picked up an 18 and put that in place of that one, and I like it quite a bit. The 22 B string was so thick that when I tried to bend it, it was trying to roll. I felt like it was rolling on the frets rather than just staying straight and, and bending. It wanted to roll, my finger wanted to roll around it. I was having a hard time push it, pushing it. I didn't like it, but I like everything else about it. But until I'm sure, I need to keep this for reference and or write something down because I have some other gauges I want to try as well. Power Slinky, pretty much the same thing as this, but, and it has a 18 B string, which I like, that's what I put on this set. But then the top gets a little bit light. It ends with a 48, which is just two, two uh, thousandths bigger than a 46, which I think is going to be too light for C sharp. Unlike this, which has a 54, which feels about right. But I'm still going to try this to see if it works out. But I won't throw anything away until I'm done. I also have a set that my daughter just gave me for my birthday. She got me these 12 to 54, which might be okay. The B strings a 20 again, so I think that's going to be too heavy. But uh, we'll see how it goes. It's not a 22. All right, but there's just so many options that you should be willing to try. Try them all. I've also got this set to try. It starts with a 10, though, and goes to 52. So the bottom's nice, but the top might be a little bit light. That 10 with C sharp might start to warble a little bit, to flarble. But I'm going to try them. And then once I've got it figured out and I have found the, the gauge I like, I'm going to put some tape on the back of that guitar and mark it just like I did 
on my Wolfgang. All right, I've got Super Slinky. I do uh, Ernie Balls for everything. I have found that I like Ernie Ball better than any other brand out there. And I've tried coated strings, uncoated strings, GHS, um, Dr. Z. I've tried all sorts of strings. Uh, and I keep coming back to the Ernie Balls. I think they are about the best. And I have packets and packets and packets of them. Because anytime I visit somebody in a music store, if I go in and play anything, I'm sure to buy something when I leave. I appreciate local music stores. And I want to show that appreciation by buying some strings or some picks or anything once I'm in there. Alrighty, so try, try all sorts of strings and then make notes about it. And because once I find the set I like for that guitar, I don't want to have to go through this again when I restring it. I don't want to have to wonder what it was that it decided I liked. So you need to keep packages or write things down or mark it on the back of the guitar once you're happy. And then you can go, or, go ahead and order a bunch and it'll all be good. Now I do typically run tens on everything and tune down at least a half a step, but my new PRS right up there, that thing is telling me that it wants something a little lighter than tens, but I just can't deal with nines. I don't like nines really. So what I found, was these right in between a nine and a ten the uh, diodario xl exl 120 plus 9.5 11.5 and then it's pretty much the straight shot up through uh, a regular 10 to 46 but it's not it's 16 24 34 44 so overall a little bit lighter but not as light as straight nines, which end with 32.42. This ends with a 34.44. And I think that PRS is going to love these because it just has a feel. When I play it with the tens on it, there's just something about it that's telling me the guitar would prefer a little bit lighter gauge. It came with nines, and I didn't like it. Uh, but I may go back. Um, but I, I'm excited to try these uh, 9.5s, and I think I might really like the 9.5s on the uh, Telecaster as well. It's kind of it's fighting the 10s a little bit. All right, so that's strings. Now, a thing about acoustics also. Um, my Taylor, right back there, really nice guitar. I love that. It's got the LR Bags F hole humbucker. Well, not humbucker, but uh, pickup in it, and it's very nice. It's uh, all wood, no laminate and it really growls it's got a good bark to it it's a very nice guitar and for it i struggled as well and there's not as many offerings for acoustic guitars but you still have your lights your mediums and your heavies and i think medium gauge on any guitar is just too much stress for the guitar even though i tune down a little bit it's just too thick a string i think when you get up into mediums but i did want something a little more than the lights and after a lot of searching and going through lots of uh, looking around different websites and whatnot I came across these now here's a Diodario phosphor bronze light gauge it goes from 12 to 53 but it's a little light for me these Martin acoustic SPs are light mediums but just a little more than light it's a 12.5 up through a 55. So instead of a 53, it's a 55. Instead of the 12, it's a 125. Instead of the 16, it's a 165. Instead of 24, it's a 255. Instead of 32, 335. 42, 435. And instead of the 53, it's a 55. Not much. We're talking thousandths of an inch. Just a little bit bigger string. And yet the change makes all the difference in the world on the guitar. And I can attest to that and say that uh, absolutely these are tons more fun to play for me than these. Even though they're very much similar string, it's just that much difference in the gauge that makes the difference in the playing and the fun. Okay, so get out there, try everything on those strings. 
make notes, and then when you find out what it is you like, so you don't have to go through the whole process again, put some tape on the back of your guitar or write it down somewhere. But don't throw these things out when you're done uh, until you are sure of what you're doing. Keep your packages, like I did. This is the current one. Keep it until you know whether or not you like it or don't like it. All right, let's talk picks real quick. Um, back in the day, when I lived in Forest Hill, my neighbors, old neighbors, Bill and Mill, gave me this little box. I didn't know what to do with it. I don't know why they gave it to me, but they gave it to me. And it's a nice little box, but what it turned into was my pick holder of all my picks that I've used throughout the years and or uh, am using currently. And it's nice. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about picks. Uh, my favorite pick of all is the Dunlop Tortix, and I prefer the blue, the 1.0 millimeter. When I was a kid, the uh, it gave you status. If you used a real thick pick, you somehow had a better status. Uh, you as a guitar player were seen as uh, some sort of better guitar player based on the size of your pick. Um, but that's not necessarily true. I think new guitar players are going to benefit, of course, from a softer pick, one that is more forgiving as you learn to control those strings and really beat on them and get the tones out that you need to. New guitar players are going to benefit from a softer pick that allows you to really um, hit the strings and have it be very forgiving. Here's one that's no thicker than a piece of cardstock and that will be fairly noisy. You'll hear a lot of flap as you pick the strings. There'll be less guitar tone, but a lot, but it'll be very easy to strum because the pick isn't giving you any sort of resistance back. But as you get better, you will start to in, prefer or enjoy the aspects of a stiffer pick. There's a 1.14, that's what I used to play um, back in the day. That was my pick, that purple Dunlop. It was great. Uh, I also did some crazy things to my picks way back when so that I could hang on to them because I was a greasy little guy with uh, sweat. I had a pH of about four. Long-haired shredder. Uh, and I couldn't hang on to my picks. So I took hot irons to them and made little dents in them so that they added some grip. And these picks are about 30 years old which I have no idea why I still have them or how I have them, but I do. And I think that's pretty cool as well. Worn, really crazy. I mean, look at the wear on that one. Should have been replaced, but back then I didn't have two nickels to wear to rub together either. So I had, uh, I hung on to picks well beyond their usefulness. Um, again, lots of different kinds. I love the Dunlops. I think this is called Delrin. It's the most consistent wearing type plastic. So from pick to pick to pick, you'll have picks that, re, uh, that wear consistently for you. Um, I don't like the nylon ones. Um, and I don't like the super hard clear plastic ones. But then again, you might. Now, for acoustics, what I think you ought to try what I really like are these celluloid picks. These are super nice for acoustic playing and they really make a difference. Now celluloid is a plastic that I think is made by combining cotton fibers and sulfuric acid. They do that in just like a petri dish or a tray and it dissolves all the cotton fibers into this cool plastic stuff. These celluloid mediums are great. And I will tell you, I think it makes a tonal difference when I'm playing my acoustic when I use these as opposed to a Dunlop or a Tordex type shell. I think there's a real difference. They do wear faster, but there's, you know, they're cheap, they're picks, so it's easy to replace them. The other one I might suggest for acoustics is the Dunlop Orange. It's nice and soft and forgiving for the strumming those big chords. It's not going to be too harsh or brittle on your strings. It won't fight back. It's giving enough that you will get relief from those big strums, and yet it's firm enough that it's going to impact those strings and give you a lot of vibration and a lot of tone. But definitely seek out and try some of these celluloids if you're an acoustic player, because they are very nice. 
much more so, I think, noticeably so, than some of these other picks for acoustic jams. Um, and then while we're talking about it, how to hold a pick, there's a couple of ways to hold a pick, and you should pick whatever one works for you. There is no right way. There is a combination of ways, and I use both. I use the picking a card type, which is just like this, where if you were to pick a card out of a deck of cards, you would pick it like that and hold it thusly and pick away at your heart's content. I do that a lot for strumming, um, for looser type picking. The other method that a lot of metal players will advocate is for you to curl your index finger in, place the pick on the pad of your finger, and then put your thumb down so that your finger is actually curled back under the pick and you leave just a little bit of that plectrum out, out in front, and then you pick a whip. All right. And this is actually a very nice way when you're being, when you have to be deliberate and specific in your picking. And if your rhythm is a metal type rhythm with a lot of notes, eighth notes, 16th notes, if you're really having to pick that, sh that string and you want clarity and articulation, then I do prefer this method of holding the pick as opposed to that. But for strumming and or lesser articulate stuff, I often will play with the pick a card grip and I alternate between the both. So there's no one right way. So pick the one you like the best and get comfortable with it. But try lots of picks because there are differences. Try lots of strings because it can be the difference between a good experience and an awesome experience every time you pick up your guitar. All right, and that's what we're after. Everybody having a good time with their axes. So that was it. Neat and simple and quick. Happy holidays. We'll see you next time.